Well, hello, every blah blah. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to another vlog. Okay, Sunday, it's Sunday. I haven't vlogged on Friday, and I'm really sorry about that. I was. I just needed a minute, you know, sometimes you just need a minute and I needed a minute and now I'm in the office today because I'm working on paints and I'm working on pastes and I just created the most beautiful mixed media souffle. We're going to call them souffles and it is like a really, really thick base and then um, it has all sorts of beautiful... Um, uh, like a sparkles in it so let me just see if i can open one hand if i can't open with one hand i'm gonna put you down and open it souffle looks like i know it doesn't look like much but it's got all sorts of weird and wonderful things inside and it is usable through like a really thick stencil like stencil that has really thick um design not like really intricate one because obviously the bigger particles as you can see they will not go through but this is just out of this world and this dries clear so when it dries and i'm currently drying it i'm going to show you how beautiful it looks like so this is really perfect for those little kind of bits on the side if you had a lacquer like, charm and stuck it down you just sewed it um and then it was painted and then you just need something like on the side some little bit of sparklage this is what it is perfect for these are 50 ml pots and by the time i am releasing this i'll probably have them on the website i'm not sure yet we will see but this is what it looks like and i'm going to be doing labels and labeling them in a second getting the labels cut we've got like a beautiful ornate labels that i can then work on now i have put a little bit of that paste let me just put it to the side i have put a little bit on that paste on the on here but as you can see it doesn't look like much yet because it has to dry completely it looks a bit off-white here but it's not off-white it is really white um so i'm going to let it dry and i'm going to show you what it looks like when it's completely dry so I did promise you I'm going to show you the souffle um, after it's dried. So it's still drying a little bit. You can see it's still, still a little bit milky uh, bits just in the center. But other than that, it on the outskirts, it's already nice and dry and it looks absolutely amazing. Other news, I've been working on paints today and I have some really gorgeous colors made. So we have this one. We have this gorgeous shimmer silver. And you do have to give them a, a shake, but just one shake is enough for like one shake. Is sh sh oh, come on, Anna. <laughs> shake it once a day and it's fine for all your use. Um, and like our Lumis. Um, so then you have this gorgeous brown as well. So that's three. You have the purple. That's four. We have the green. Oh, olive green is my favorite. That's five. And there was another one um so yeah and then we have the pink so let me just give this a mix so we have the pink so these colors are going to be coming uh in both in sets well i actually don't know if they're going to be available individually but yeah these six colors they are absolutely beautiful so they are done and i am all covered in paint everywhere got to scrub my hands and then moisturize nails ready to have to put another color on but as you can see i should have done it before i did the paint or maybe not <laughs> anyway give it a good scrub look it's everywhere even on my wrist so i thought i'm going to do a little chatty video today about the cost of craft products and also to answer a question that sometimes pops up which is why don't we sell other um, manufacturers' products? We do sell a little bit of Prima, but it's mainly that we're selling our own products and the products we have manufactured for us or we manufacture ourselves. And I think this is a really important point um, that, especially when it comes to general, like a product, craft product pricing, because there are a few things that, there are really a few things that come to mind when it comes to uh, craft product pricing. So one, I'm just going to say off the bat 
that craft products are expensive. Craft product are, products are expensive to manufacture, they're expensive to design, they uh, are expensive to uh, import. Uh, whatever means you're trying to acquire craft products, either for your own personal use or for business to sell, they are expensive. And that is really difficult to convey to people because sometimes when when um, my business or me in my business, we um, unveil a new product or a new collection, um, not very frequently, frequently think, thankfully, but at times I hear things like, this is very expensive. Oh my gosh, this is so expensive. And it usually is, I'm going to be honest, it usually is a big surprise to me when I see things like that, because I know that the products we sell are not the most expensive products that there are, and they also really, really good quality. So, um, so for example, quite recently, uh, we have shown, we have been uh, doing a, a promotion on Facebook uh, where we were selling um, products. We'll be selling our eight, six by six and eight by eight papers. Some of their papers went on sale um, as it is, as it is in business. You know, we, we try to, um, to, we try to put a sale on maybe less popular designs just, just so they don't st sit on the shelf and take space for some other designs we might, might be manufacturing. And and I got a comment saying I really don't think six ninety nine is that cheap for uh eight by eight paper pad. Now I really think six ninety nine is very affordable for uh for eight by eight paper pad, especially if this paper pad is really good quality, a really good print. It is it is beautiful a design uh, that is not a uh, just repeated pattern design. So you get a fifteen plus designs in that twenty sheet paper pad. And that is in, excel, in itself really expensive to produce. Now, let me clarify. There are really, really big companies that can afford, for example, to buy a thousand units of a paper pad. And yes, then they will probably get that paper pad, pad for, uh, for, for very affordable price for them. And they can then go on and sell it at a full markup. And then they can reduce it and still make money on it. However, small business like mine cannot do not we do not have that many customers to buy a thousand units of a specific one paper pad and then hope that it's going to sell we have some papers where we sold out 500 units or thousand units or two thousand units over a really long period of time but not something that we can just you know get a thousand off and think oh in a week it's going to be gone we're not that big yet uh hopefully one day we will be but it's still to come. So when we order our papers, we order in them in increments of 50, 100, 200, 300, 500. We have one paper pad coming coming for Black Friday and it's going to be our Black Friday special and we're going to be ordering 750 of that specific paper pad and it is going to be very reduced. Um, so this is going to be a paper pad that will be a special, special price and special design just for Black Friday. But outside of these special events where we are expecting a high volume of sales, we do we order smaller quantities of paper pads. And obviously when we print them, then you know the higher quantities of paper pads, they lower the price per unit. Um, so when we order smaller quantities, obviously we pay higher price, which makes it difficult for us to make money on that product and also makes it really difficult to have any discounts on it. So the one thing I feel really strongly about is not making a huge markup on 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 a product. Now I'm going to say straight away that anyone who's in business, anyone who's who's got their head on their shoulders uh, when it comes to business, is going to think I'm insane. Now, from a customer point of view, um, this will sound like a great like a great thing, like a fair thing. From a business point of view, this is not the right thing to do, but I do not believe in any other thing. So let me explain. I don't believe that we should be uh, marking up something something by more than 50%. 50% is something that I think is fair. And when you're looking at the recommended prices of the manufacturers we buy from, they recommend that we mark up by 50%. So for example, I buy something for five pounds, I sell it for 12. Now you think this is not 50%. Well, think about it again. I sell about it for five pounds and then it, I actually sell it for 10 pounds plus VAT. This, this is how it works. Any, any business guru, anyone who's going to advise you in business or advi advise me in business would have said that 50% is not enough of the markup that I should be charged. I should be marking up something by 70 or 80%. I know as a business, if I've done that, we would not have a business. I cannot have such huge markups. 
Um, and it just the business just doesn't work like this, especially in the craft industry. And this leads me to a, a point that I find is a little bit of a sore point, really, uh, which is the companies that sell uh, products that are widely available and they discount them really heavily or they're just offering them at much, much lower prices. Now, I'm going to give you an example, and this is a real life example. Whilst I was researching the prices for the stencils that we recently put on the website, I realized that one of our competitors has a released the same stencil for £7.99. Now, I have checked how much I purchased those, those stencil, stencils for, and if I was to sell those stencils for £7.99, then we would just about break even. Uh, and I really, really don't know how this other company um, admittedly, probably a little bit smaller company than mine, can sell that stencil for $7.99. And that leads me to wondering if the, this, this business is actually paying their taxes. Are they paying VAT? Maybe they're not paying, paying VAT and this is how they can um, afford to have their uh, product so much cheaper but if they are paying VAT maybe but have they maybe hit the VAT threshold they've been in the business for quite a while they seem to be having a steady stream of orders so if they hit the VAT threshold have they actually registered and have they followed that compliance that is required from any business that hits £85,000 of annual um, revenue um, that makes me question uh, that uh, if they're working from home are they declaring that to the council um, are they declaring that they're using their home as a business, which then carries the obligation to potentially pay a business rates or have changes to your council tax? All of that is really, really important. But unfortunately, a lot of the smaller business do not comply with those requirements. And as a result, they can offer products at much lower prices. The problem, the problem with that kind of behavior is that, yes, it does benefit that specific customer in a short period of time because the customers get that product much cheaper and they're probably very happy. We are very happy. I am very happy when I get something at much lower price. But what hap is happening is that the money that the, 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 the tax bill should be receiving, the money that the councils should be receiving, they're not then paid. And, and in, in the grand scheme of things, the person that is really just low in their pockets is that specific um that specific person um and i just strongly strongly disagree with it and i have to say it really really frustrates me when i see those kind of prices because i know for me as a business it's absolutely not doable to sell at those prices yet someone else is doing it so how do they do it it's always at cost there's always cost to these kind of situations and we really have to be aware of it because if something is a good deal yeah it might be a good deal and it might be a genuine deal i'm not saying that company is not a genuine company in fact i know they are a genuine company but there's always a, a, there's always a cost there's always a price to pay and in this case the, the price to pay is that they are probably uh, not declaring the, the money that they should be owing to um to the uh you know to, to the to the country that is allowing them to run business so that now leads me to why we are not really selling products of other manufacturers. The main reason is because when I when we manufacture our own products, um, I know exactly what is the cost of every single thing I've put in uh, in this product and my time, etc. And I can create something unique as well and then bundle bundle all together into nice price package and then sell it. And I know that this specific product, because it either is manufactured by us or it has been manufactured for us exclusively, I know it's not going to be anywhere else, available anywhere else and I'm not going to have those price wars um, anywhere. And do you know what? I am more than happy with it. We have so many beautiful paper designs. We're creating our own mediums, which is really exciting. And we're doing it on a small scale, but we're really, really happy with what we're doing here at Craftbox. And uh, and I don't have to be fighting uh, with, uh, with other companies. You know, I don't have to have those price wars where they um charge so much less than we are able to charge because they're not VAT payers for example or because they they it, they run the business from uh from their bedrooms which again is perfectly fine i run the business from my bedroom when i first started i completely understand uh, that and and you know and and perhaps those businesses will always remain in their bedrooms and it's all and it, that's perfectly fine as well 
I would I sometimes wish I was still in my bedroom running this business. But th this doesn't change the fact that I do have two employees I have to pay for. I do also have to pay my own mortgage and we have to pay for the office at the moment for two offices um, whilst we're having overlap between two offices and for everything else that is um, is related to running a business um, for all the taxes, for national insurance, PAYE, for VAT, um, all those all those um, uh, costs um, are included in the price of our products and because we manufacture them ourselves we can set our own prices which are fair as I said um, and which allow us to um, to function as a business. Guess what? It's late. It's dark. I'm gonna close up and I'm gonna be picked up. It's too late for me to walk. Um, if I was to walk I should have set off ages ago and I really wanted to walk, really wanted to do some exercise because to, to be fair I have not exercised for probably about three weeks which I feel really bad about and I need to get cracking with exercise again. I set myself a challenge actually that I am going to do a 45 minute spinning class every single day throughout my Christmas break. I don't know when I'm going to start my Christmas break yet. Um, It will be by the I mean, it will be around 20th of December, so we will see. But I wanted to show you something else, which is really exciting. So I have created three pastes, which will be part of our Vrastic collection. And these are non-shimmery. So you saw the paints I showed you early on, and these were all shimmery. And these are not shimmery. Um, these are just a, just a matte stencil paste. They can probably double up as paint, but they will probably be quite sheer. They are made to be applied at thickness. Um, so, yeah, so really excited about these. Um, I love the colours, and I think this will be really good for all the vintage projects. I may have to refine a little bit of that one because the granules in the pigments need to be milled a little bit more because you can actually see them i mean i quite like that look it just looks a little bit pummy stony um but i will see if i will leave it like that or um refine it and then mill it a little, a little bit finer um it's all like making paint and making paste it look easy it looks easy but um it's not really um but yeah um, that one a question mark yet I'm not sure as I said I do quite like that effect if you can see we will see but these two are done so you've got this gorgeous chocolatey brown and and then this is just stunning so it's kind of teal so this will I think this will look really good for like rust and patina projects I'm quite excited because we're going to be in introducing the ephemera which has the white outline now historically we have only done ephemera that was close cut um, so it didn't have any white out outline at all and the reason for that is because it's actually like most of the companies do the ephemera with the outline but it's really nice to have the really close cut design so that you can place it exactly where you want it and it will just m merge with your background rather than having this white outline however and this is why we're doing this one as an outlined one some of the um some of the designs like for example this one or this one it will be impossible for us to cut because the lines are too thin. So having this white outline actually allows us to have this design um, as an ephemera. Um, so some of them we will have with the outline like this one, for example. So we can have like things like fern, which would be impossible to cut without the outline for the machines we've got. So I've already got two piles. We're going to be introducing it soon. Um, but for now... For now I'm getting ready for Black Friday and Cyber Monday so this is the focus for this week so we're not going to be running any promotions or any adverts or uh, we're not going to I'm probably not going to be sending much newsletters maybe apart from the newsletter about the new pastes um, because we're getting ready for the Black Friday and on Black Friday we're going to have special deals on our papers on Snip Art and Charms so these three things we're going to have and we're also going to have uh, like a free shipping code uh, on your uh, um, it's like a second and third and fourth order however many orders you want to you want to make as long as you pay at least one shipping um then we're going to send you a free shipping code that will work for the remaining like three or four days 
um, and then we will pack everything together and send it everything in one parcel. So you're only going to pay one shipping, no matter how much packing is going to take us to to uh, pack your order. So I'm quite excited. It's going to be, well. I hope it's going to be a good thing. Um, obviously, um, end of the year is a time when when most of the businesses do sales, and uh, we're going to be doing that as well. So Black Friday and Cyber Monday are going to be one one of our biggest sales this year um so yeah so we will see how it's going to go i hope you're going to join me for that one uh obviously i'm going to be vlogging um from monday onwards um and keep you updated with everything for now i'm going to sign off because i'm going home and i'll see you again tomorrow